next Wednesday, we will be going through all of the confirmed transfers since I made their respective video for each club. So, for like the likes of Aston Villa, they've signed a few more players, I believe, or at least one or two. And so, hopefully, um, we'll be going through each team, and if they've signed any more players by the end of deadline day, we'll, we'll have found out. Um, I've got a pedo tash and beard going on. I'm being really lazy and I can't be asked to shave it. I, I, in all honesty, I'll probably shave it after they've made this video. But we are going to be looking at the last of five teams. So let's go like this and hope it works. And it does. Here we go. So part four of four, as you can see. Let's get into the video. I've got my candle on behind the green screen. Obviously not next to it because then it will catch fire. And I don't want that. So let's move on. Let's do let's do something like this. Southampton. Now I've had to go through and make sure that I haven't missed anyone off. If I have, let me know down below and I'll add them on. From what I could see, I haven't because the last one, Wolves, I think it's the last one, there was an extra player that I had to add in, so I assume they've updated it. Um, but Southampton have signed Mohamed Salisu from Valladolid. Not entirely sure how good he actually is. Obviously, I'd be lying if I said he was this amazing player. I haven't got a clue, personally. Uh, but for an £11 million fee, seems relatively reasonable. Ah, I didn't update the transfer net profit for Wolves. Ah, we'll get to that when we get to that. Anyway, moving on. Like I said, for an £11 million fee, seems very very reasonable in this day and age. 11 million just seems like a normal fee. Like, can be quite cheap if it's a good player. Um, and then Kyle Walker-Peters from Tottenham for 12 million now. He's featured for Tottenham over the last, like, what, two or three seasons in and out of the squad. Obviously, he, he, when Kyle Walker left, he was tipped to be the next Kyle Walker, being Kyle Walker-Peters wasn't really that type of player. But Southampton have got an okay player there. Not the worst player they could have got. Again, 12 million is not bad. Uh, and then they've let Cedric Suarez go on a free to Arsenal, which for me is a bit of a, a bit of a shame. I don't think it's all that bad. Um, but I would say definitely a free. It might not have been. I'm going to sneeze. Anyway, they have signed... Oh no, they have let Pierre-Emile Hoiberg go to Spurs for 15 million, which... My friend's a Southampton fan. I'm going to say this, and he says 50 million is good for Hoiberg because he doesn't rate him. But I, I, I don't mind Hoiberg. I always thought that Hoiberg. I don't. I think 50 million might be a little bit cheap. Southampton have this thing of letting players go for a, for, for less than they're probably worth, and then the other teams making them good in, into good players. But I'm not too sure. Uh, Mario Lamina has left the club on loan to go to Fulham. We thought we'd discuss that one. As we have Harrison Reed has gone to Fulham for six million. So a net spend of one point nine million. That's what they've got rid of so far this year. They've brought in a few, a, a few good players. Uh, spent relatively wisely. You know, got got rid of a midfielder for fifteen. Bought another one for ten point nine. I assume Salisu is a midfielder. Um, lost Cedric Suarez on a free transfer, so I've bought in Kyle Walker Peters for 12. It's a good bit of business, it's not bad. In Southampton, have a, uh, they're renowned for like building up youngsters, so I assume two very young players. Moving forward, we have Tottenham, who have done a good bit of business. If you'd have spoke to me about two weeks ago, I'd have said that their, their transfers have been a little bit shit. You know, Joe Hart from Burnley on a free transfer, you know, he was a free agent. Uh, but Sky Sports have, have put it down as a, a Burnley player. But we all know that he left the club. And then signed for Tottenham. Uh, Matt Doherty for Wolves. Great player. I actually really, really like him. I've got nothing against him. I think he'll be a good fit at Spurs. Uh, so fair play. And then Pierre-Emile Hoiberg for Southampton. Yet another sort of average midfielder for the Premier League for a top club. Um, I know, I know I've just said that for Southampton, letting him go for 15 seems a bit stupid, but he was good at Southampton, you know. And, and I think 15 doesn't really represent his value in that aspect. Whereas for Tottenham, they've spent 15 million, which is, is a fair bit of money still. On, a, on, on an average sort of player that I'm not entirely 
usual fits their system you know they've got the like like um, what does he really add to the Tottenham team like really I think they, they should have been more focused on a, on a well, I, I was going to say right back and left back but they've gone and got those so maybe they should have been more I don't know I suppose they've spent the money in other areas I'm waffling but Hoiberg for 15 million seems a little bit like a weird buy for me I'm not sure what he really offers for Tottenham I'm, I'm not quite sure whether he's necessary but you know we'll wait and see so that was that was my verdict for the first three players that I had a couple of uh, like, like I say two weeks ago and then they've gone and done an absolute madness haven't they they've signed Sergio Aguillon who I'm a big fan of I am a huge fan of Sergio Aguillon uh, for Real Madrid from 21 million pounds that is a bargain as is a bargain for a player of that quality 21 million is is fine and then they've got Gareth Bale on loan with I'm not sure whether it's an optional or mandatory fee at the end of it if, uh, it's not that expensive anyway so all in all really solid you know Bale he should be playing right wing as far as I'm aware you know you'll have Harry Kane on top a uh, human son on the left Real Madrid on the left Gareth Bale on the right and I think it's solid all in all it's fair you know Ricky Hunt fits straight in at left back Matt Doherty probably fits straight in at right back and they really strengthen the team for not a lot of money they've spent a total of what 51 million I haven't updated their net spend either have I I'm a melt why is the net spend say 7 it's quite clearly 51 million Net spend of 51 million, ignore that fee there. I can't point, there we go. Ignore that fee. Um, but out of the club, Oliver Skip's gone to Norwich on loan. A player that, you know, if you've played career mode or football manager, you'll know he's an up and coming youngster. Probably not quite good enough for the first team, if at all good for the first team yet. So sending him out on loan is a very good deal. And then two bits of business that I'm going to say are good. Wanyama and Vertonghen leaving on free transfers. Personally, I think that's great. Jan Vertonghen, obviously, on a high wage. You know, you, you need to free up that for a not-so-good centre-back anymore. Sending him out to Benfica for free is a, is a relatively good deal. And then Wanyama, again, probably on a decent wage. Getting him off to Montreal on a free transfer, just getting rid of that wage budget. It's fair enough. And then Luke Amos for, uh, has gone to QPR on an undisclosed fee. Don't know much about him. If I'm being totally honest, but I hope he, hope he does well at QPR, and obviously an undisclosed fee, we're not entirely sure what it is. So, moving forward, we have West Brom now again. I think they've had a very, very good transfer window. You know, I, I tip them to not do too well. But with their performance against Chelsea, anything can happen, you know. They're a great team. There's a reason they got promoted. And let's not forget that, you know, Fulham have been a bit terrible. Whereas West Brom and Leeds seem to have been doing okay. Uh, Matias Pereira, a, a great talent in my eyes. I think he's going to be incredible. For only 8 million, I assume that was a uh, buyout clause from the loan deal last season. <laughs> Boys, I am that exhausted. I've, I've woke up today, I've had a big lie and I've tied in my room and I'm tired again. My voice is like, eh. that's why it's so whispery and weird because I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit tense. Uh, but yeah, eight million is a bit of a steal, and I quite like that. <clears throat> now, Grady D and Garner from West Ham on a twelve million. At West Ham are actually on the next slide anyway, so let's talk about this for a minute. What are West Ham doing? Getting rid of a generational talent like that is honestly, from the reports coming from inside the club itself. Many of the fans and many of the players have all come out and said he had a huge future. Okay, that's something to consider. Why get rid of him? Second of all, okay, if you did want to leave and you want to get rid of him, <coughs> demand a higher fee than £12 million because that is a steal for West Ham. They've got two incredible players there. Great future prospects for a combined total of £20 million. That's a great bit of business, and I think West Brom have done very well with that. Mm. 
Cedric Kipri. I'm not entirely sure who he is. Like I say, I'm not going to bullshit you here. I'm not too sure. For one million, it seems like a, either a youth player or maybe someone that might be good in a few years. Either that one might be a little bit older and has come in as a backup. I don't know. Then we move on to another two bits of good business. Conor Gallagher. They've got a loan from Chelsea. I like Conor Gallagher. I know Benji likes Conor Gallagher a lot. So for Chelsea, it's good. He's getting Premier League experience at a, a, a decent level. In and around a decent new up-and-coming young team. It's going to be great. So from a Chelsea and a West Brom perspective, two bits of good business. They have signed Ivanovic from Zenit. Now, I like Ivanovic. I'm a Chelsea fan. I like him a lot. I think for what he did at the club was incredible. He was a staple right back for for many years and then passed it on to Azpilicueta. I don't know how well it will do now. He's a little bit older. It seems a bit of a strange one for West Brom, in my eyes, to go and sign like a... I think it's, what, 35 or 36 now. It's a bit strange. And then David Button from Brighton. This is the one that I don't know much about. But I've heard the name so much. Do you know when you just hear a name and then... But I can't put a face to it. Anyway, a total combined spend of 21 million. And they've brought in six different players. It's insane. Out of the club is Kane Wilson to Forest Green. That's the only notable thing. And if I'm being honest, that's going to be like a young player or uh, uh, just a, a player that they no longer want. You know, he hasn't gone to a brilliant club. So, 21 million total. They've brought in Matthias Pereira, Dean Garner, Conor Gallagher, Ivanovic. I mean, where do, where do we go from there? They're building a good side under uh, Slavon Bilic. And hopefully they'll stay up, you know. Next we have West Ham. They've signed Thomas Suchek from Slavia Prague at the end of his loan deal for £15 million. Pounds. Yay. I mean, there's not much to say about that, is there? Who's gone out of the club? A jetty has gone to South Carolina. Again, don't know much about him, so hopefully it does well. We've just discussed Crazy Dean Garner. He's gone to West Brom. That's a stupid bit of business from West Ham, but fuck knows why that's happened. And then Jordan Hugill, or Hugill, Hugill, something like that, has gone to Norwich for £5 million. Pounds. Now, okay, fair play, get rid of a player. £5 million doesn't seem like a lot of money. Norwich have probably snapped up a decent play there. Not much more to say about that, but they for saying they haven't done a lot and they've got rid of a great player, the net spend of only in profit of two million pound doesn't really seem brilliant, does it? And it makes me think that that's all they've got left to spend is that two million, and they're not going to spend it. So, okay, not not great bit of business. And now we move on to Wolves, who I think have had an incredible. Incredible transfer season, a uh, transfer window. Yet yeah, don't look to be the player that they, they. They don't look the team that they are capable of being. They've started the season poorly, as we know. They've brought in Fabio Silva from Porto for thirty-five million. Again, a great talent, up and coming youngster, been on the radar for a number of years now. Fits that Portuguese aesthetic, doesn't it? Fernando Marcel from Leon for 1.8 million. A centre back. Oh no, left back. Left back. To cover. Um, who's at left back? No. Is it a left back or a centre back or a right back? It's a defender. And I'm pretty sure he's a left back, but I could be completely wrong with what I'm saying. I could have the completely wrong guy in my head. What the fuck are you doing? Fuck knows what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna do it like this for the rest of the video. They've brought in Fernando Marcel. Anyway, 1.8 million for him. It's pretty cheap, if you ask me. Um, for a good looking player. Hopefully he features, I'm not entirely sure. And then, we move on to the new one. Nelson Semedo. Nelson Semedo from Barcelona. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop with the accent. Right, Nelson Semedo from Barcelona. The 37 million pound again is a decent player coming from Barcelona is not going to be terrible but fuck me has he had a poor start to the season <laughs> played one game
game conceded four. But again, if it's that Portuguese aesthetic, it's very nice. <laughs> now a strange one for me. I've done it again, look. I'm telling you right now, autocorrect must be must be fucking me up here because I definitely put Hoover. Kian Hoover has gone from Liverpool for nine million. I think that's a bit of a bargain. Again, another up and coming player. We keep saying it time and time again. Nine million seems a little bit cheap. And I've probably put him around the thirteen to fifteen million. Now out of the club, Sarkic has gone to Sus uh, Shrewsbury on loan. Matt Doherty, we've already discussed, has gone to Spurs. That's good for Spurs, not so great for Wolves. Will Norris has gone to Burnley on a free, that was in the first video. Then Elliot Watts has gone to Bradford for an undisclosed fee. I don't know who you are, but hey ho. So I need to do, where's my calculator gone? Let me wipe my calculator up. Calculator. Let's wipe it over here. Wipe it, wipe it over here. Uh, 35 plus 1.8 plus 36.8 plus 9. Minus 15. They spent 67.6 million pounds. That is an outrageous amount of money for four players that oh, I'm struggling to see where they fit. Like Fabio Silva, fair play, yep, yeah, fits up front. Samedo, yep, yeah, fits up right back. But then again, you've got a damage right all right. But then again, yeah, you are replacing Matt Doherty, fair enough. Kian Hoover, okay, fair enough, he's a youngster, fits the squad. It's a nice player to bring in to get some game experience. And Fernando Marcel, not entirely sure why you've bought him, but 70 odd million is a bit, bit much, isn't it? So that brings us to the end of the. Um, what does it? Yeah. That brings us to the end of the transfer videos. So next week, like I say, we'll be doing a, a deadline day roundup of any player or any players that have come in since deadline day is finished. Or since I didn't add them into my respective videos, so the likes of Bakshuai to Crystal Palace, uh, Adama Traore, not Adama Traore, um, is it Bertrand Traore? Just come to Aston Villa. Uh, 